Okay, hi there. Welcome to this special video looking at the, uh, the information provided by the Edexcel board for A-level economics in 2022, the advanced information. Uh, this is important stuff as we head into the exam season. Uh, the Edexcel board have said that the exam structure will remain the same. So there'll be three papers. I'll talk about that in this session. Uh, but they provided some very important information about the topics from which those questions will be set. Uh, and also, critically, of course, the, the topics that uh, will not be the subject of exam questions uh, in 2022. What we've done is we have been through the advanced information, we have cross-checked it against the specification, and then we can give you some helpful advice on the, the key topics to revise for each of the various papers. So let's think about, first of all, paper one. Uh, paper one is micro. Uh, paper one draws on themes one and three from your Edexcel economics uh, specification. Paper two is macro. We'll come to that in a minute, drawing on themes two and four. And paper three is the synoptic paper, where you have two essential, essentially hybrid data response stroke essay questions. One largely micro, one macro, but obviously with a mixture of micro and macro questions and that's paper three and that's sat i think in the middle of june or early, early june okay so theme one uh the micro so in terms of what has has been left out from advance notice so they have taken out things like positive and normative statements the economic problem and production possibility crunches although keep in mind uh, that you'll probably need to know about ppfs and use them uh, particularly when you're talking about international trade. It's one of the ways that you can show comparative advantage. Specialisation and division of labour is out. So too uh, topics about the different types of economic system, free market, mixed and command economies. So all that is gone. Clearly, they've kept in the bulk of the price theory, the economics of rational decision making, including utility and uh, uh, the object of maximising uh, satisfaction from a given income, theories of demand. Crucially, the different types of elasticity of demand, price, income and cross-price elasticity, they are included both for paper one and also for paper three. Very important that you revise your elasticities of demand and supply uh, ahead of your exams. They've included uh, the price determination, causes of changes in market prices and the price mechanism. Price elasticity of supply is often not well revised by students. That's definitely worth spending some time on. Now, they have taken out consumer surplus and producer surplus, and they've also taken out indirect taxes and subsidies and some behavioural economics. Keep in mind, everybody, that you can still use these concepts. So if you're talking about economic welfare, for example, later on in the course, the economic welfare effects of monopoly or collusion and oligopoly, now you'll be bringing in the concepts of consumer producer surplus. So please do revise them. However, they will not be subject of questions, specific questions in the papers. And they've taken out 1.29 there. They've taken out indirect taxes and subsidies. Fine, but of course they, they've included government intervention in markets. Now government intervention in markets includes indirect taxes and subsidies as well as things like minimum and maximum prices. So again, I would be strongly advising my students to revise the work done on indirect taxes and subsidies because that is a form of intervention in, in markets. With market failure, quite significant changes there. So they've included externalities positive and negative, in both paper one and paper three. So externalities should form an absolutely key part of your revision. Those externalities diagrams, the idea of social welfare losses, and crucially, uh, the types of government intervention in markets that could help to correct for the market failures uh, included. Uh, types of market failure included, but they've taken out public goods and information gaps. So those two topics will not be subject of specific questions in the exams. Please do, however, however, revise government failure. That's going to be a key, a key uh, aspect, I think. So there we go. In terms of theme one, uh, they've taken out a lot of the early stuff uh, and uh, they've taken out public goods and information failure, essentially, as part of the advance notice. That would be my takeaway from theme one. In theme three, scrolling up a little bit. Here we go. In theme three which is essentially year 13 micro for lots of students. They've taken out size and types of firms. They've taken out demergers. Business growth, 
horizontal, vertical integration and so on is both paper one and paper three. Uh, the chunk of theory of the firm, revenue curves, cost curves, economies and discoms of scale and different types of profit, all included on paper one, and also the different types of economic efficiency in paper one. Uh, that stuff will not appear in paper three, but it's going to be a key part of paper, paper one. Now, when it comes to market structures, what students need to learn, they have taken out, let's be clear here, they have taken out perfect competition, they have got rid of monopolistic competition and monopsony. So essentially, you just have your three market structures to revise. Oligopoly, monopoly and contestable markets. So in terms of oligopoly, that's things like the characteristics of oligopoly, uh, reasons for collusive and non-collusive behaviour. So your game theory will still be in there. Types of price competition, including things like limit pricing. In monopoly, uh, the, 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 that includes price discrimination. It includes things like um, a natural monopoly. So some quite big chunks there. So oligopoly, monopoly and contestability are included including the types of barrier to entry and exit and so on, and, and the economics of sunk costs. So essentially, they've just reduced your market structures to three of them. And efficiency is in there. So linking efficiency to all the market structures is going to be key. In terms of labour market economics, uh, they have taken out demand for labour from paper one, but included it, included it in paper three. Uh, factors that influence the demand for labour and so on and derive demand. Supply of labour in, in, uh, in, is included in paper one and paper three. That's things like factors affecting the supply of labour to a particular occupation and also the uh, labour immobility issues are included. Wage determination, however, uh, the, the labour market diagram essentially and things like maximum minimum wages, that kind of stuff. That is included only in paper three. Government intervention uh, in the labour market uh, and more generally in product markets, that is included in paper one, including things like privatisation and nationalisation. So all that kind of stuff is included. They've taken out the impact of government intervention, including regulatory failure. So papers one and three, paper one, some quite interesting stuff there. Just quickly thinking about your micro for paper three, elasticities, externalities, business growth, and quite a bit of labour market economics will be handy and important for paper three. How are we doing, everybody? I'm going to post a link to this handy summary document in the comments section of this video. So you'll be able to download this as a PDF presentation, print it out or keep it on your, your uh, device ahead of revision. Let's now take a look at theme two and theme four, which is paper two, your second paper, which I think is on the 6th of June, if memory serves. <laughs> I think they're all on a Monday, aren't they? Uh, is it 23rd of May, 6th of June and 13th of June in 2022? I think. Check with the example. Now, some quite big, some quite big changes to be aware of here for paper two. Paper two draws on themes two and themes four, your macroeconomics. So for theme two, they have included economic growth, included growth, uh, but taken out some of the key macro objectives, inflation, unemployment, balance of payments, all excluded from paper two. The focus on your macro seems to be consumer spending and saving and the economics of investment, and national income, uh, injections and withdrawals into the circular flow and the multiplier. Let's scroll down a bit here. So all of those things are included, but out for 2022, the causes of economic growth, output gaps, the impact of growth and macro objectives. So that's really quite important. They have taken out, for example, um, uh, inflation and unemployment and the balance of payments as key areas for detailed study. You're clearly going to revise them because macro objectives are important in the wider context. But uh, the advance notice is about the areas that will be tested on the questions. The multiplier is in. That's quite important. Uh, multiplier process as well as calculations. The trade cycle is in. 
And also for paper two and paper three, demand side policies, monetary and fiscal policy, and supply side policies, both included for paper two and paper three. So please make sure that you're really well covered on monetary and fiscal policy and supply side policies, all quite chunky topics, aren't they? However, they've taken out conflicts between targets and policies. So, uh, for example, the Phillips curve uh, is out. That's not You don't necessarily have to study that ahead of the exam. So some quite big changes there. Uh, and again, looking at paper three, paper three, uh, demand and supply side policies uh, look like they're going to be a focus for paper three. Now, when it comes to theme four, your essentially your year 13 for many students, your year 13 economics. Globalization is in for paper two. Not for paper three, however, specialization and trade, the economics of specialization and trade, theories of comparative advantage, absolute advantage, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that is included for paper two and paper three, but specialization not included for paper one. They've taken out patterns of trade. Uh, they have taken out uh, terms of trade. Never mind. <laughs> They've taken out trading blocks of the World Trade Organization. So things like customs unions, free trade uh, areas. Although I think that'll be handy just to, to cover. Uh, oftentimes, if you understand the, the shift towards regionalization and regional trade agreements, things like the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and so on, that is, a, that is a, an evaluative aspect of, of where globalization is heading. They've included restrictions on trade, so tariffs and quotas and subsidies and other non-tariff barriers, and of course the impact of uh, protectionism. Balance of payments is out. Balance of payments is out on paper two and paper three, so that's now taken out. But, and this is important, exchange rates, fixed, floating, managed exchange rates, the factors affecting exchange rates, the effect, the impact of changes uh, in exchange rates on things like growth, inflation, and so on. Exchange rates not for paper two, but included for paper three. So exchange rates could well feature, uh, that's uh, unit 4.18 there, could well feature on paper three. They've taken out international competitiveness completely and absolute and relative poverty. Uh, but they've included inequality on paper too. Well, of course, inequality is relative poverty. Now, crucially, they've taken out measures of development. They've taken out measures of development. But I think you'll be revising those, things like the Human Development Index, etc., because that gives you a kind of holistic understanding of, of, of uh, trying to capture where countries are on their development um, uh, trajectory. But development has been shifted to paper three. So I'm studying development at the moment, uh, things like trade liberalisation, oh, but development barriers, obviously, uh, but also policies to affect development. Uh, so I'm studying that at the moment with my year 13. So development barriers, things like uh, capital flight, savings gaps, etc., uh, lack of human capital, all that kind of stuff, the absence of property rights. Paper three. And strategies including influencing growth and development, privatisation, trade liberalisation, protectionism, tourism, managed exchange rates, all that kind of stuff. Your development policy, paper three. And again, I think that's quite a clear, relatively clear steer that your development economics will be paper three, not paper two. They've included a little bit of financial markets. They haven't included central banks but they've included the roles of financial markets and market failure in the financial sector. So essentially, they're basically going market failure in um, externalities, a little bit of market failure in the labour market and market failure in the financial sector. So when, you, when you're revising market failure, make sure you've covered all that, please. And finally, public expenditures without, so things like crowding out. Taxation is in public sector finances, government debt and borrowing, etc. is in for paper two. And macro policies in a global context, which is a kind of last bit, if you like, of, of, the, of the course. Macro policies in a global context, including things like tax avoidance and, and economic shocks, both paper two and paper three. OK, where are we? So my overview is, let's just scroll up and just give you a quick overview. Hopefully this has been useful. And again, I will post this as a link in the 
uh, at the top of the uh, top of the um, comment section of this video. Uh, what this does is it takes the specification, and in grey are the bits that are out of play in 2022. They will not feature uh, as questions in the exam. You can revise them. I would encourage you to revise as broadly as you can. But clearly, uh, the advanced notice is designed to help you, particularly if you have uh, suffered quite a lot of loss of schooling and there's been some disruption, perhaps through illness and absence, um, both of you and your teachers. So paper one, quite a bit taken out. Uh, paper three, I think, is the interesting thing. That's the synoptic paper. So for paper three, we're looking at elasticities, externalities, business growth, labour markets, uh, demand the supply side policies, monetary, fiscal and supply side, specialisation and trade, exchange rates and development. I think that's the really key bit for your paper three focus. OK, well, thanks for staying with me on this one. What we will do in the next few days, maybe the next week or so, is link each of these areas in the advance notice to a playlist or to some key videos on our YouTube channel. There's lots of great stuff out there on YouTube. We've got loads of videos looking at these issues. And I think this will help to uh, to focus revision ahead of the exams. We'll do lots of exam walkthroughs. We'll do lots of questions and practice questions along the way over the next few months as we head into the exam season. As always, huge thanks for joining in. We, we don't take uh, your presence for granted. Stay safe, stay curious, and see you again sometime soon. <laughs>